this research was inspired by observation that a lot of modern blockchains, uh, blockchains after the proof of work, uh, initial uh, Nakamoto's blockchains, many of them are using Byzantine fault tolerance as the backbone of the consensus protocol. So this would be true for Ethereum 2.0, Hyperledger Fabric, Threadmint recently you know, rebranded to Ignite, uh, but we see many more. And uh, we, we know that uh, Byzantine fault tolerant uh, uh, protocols for reaching consensus are much older than blockchain. Uh, they, they go back to the classic problem of uh, Byzantine generals problem that goes back to the 70s and solution, late 70s and solutions go back to the early 80s. Um, and this is all about getting independent computers to communicate and uh, achieving consensus on the state of the ledger database. So they are, uh, those uh, Byzantine fault tolerant, tolerant protocols have been used in databases since that time. Um, but there is a new and renewed interest in Byzantine fault tolerant protocols uh, because of their applications to blockchains. Because, you know, blockchains are a type of distributed databases, but they are very specific type of distributed databases because uh, uh, as we are going to, to talk about, the nodes need to be incentivized to follow the protocol. So uh, Byzantine fault tolerant uh, uh, protocols, the, the older type, can give, a, give us guidance for designing blockchain protocols, but we need to think about very important modifications. So the crucial difference uh, that we are observing between traditional databases and uh, blockchains is the difference in adversarial environment. The traditional distributed databases that were created and set up within particular company uh, were considering possibility that some nodes may fail or be hacked, uh, but the, if, if everything goes well, the nodes that are not failing or being hacked, they will just simply follow the protocol. Uh, in, block, in blockchains, nodes are not part of the same company. Nodes maintaining the blockchains are all independent entities that cannot be directed by a company uh, to, to follow a protocol. Instead, they individually decide whether they are going to be better off you know, maximizing their payoff by following the protocol or deviating from that protocol. Uh, so, uh, so the protocol in order to be really implemented needs to be what we call incentive compatible so that every node will find it optimal to follow, uh, to follow the, the protocol. Okay? And that means that we need to use uh, economic modeling and think about economic incentives in the analysis of blockchain consensus using Byzantine fault tolerant, uh, fault tolerant protocols. So this is what, what we are devising in this paper is such an economic model of Byzantine fault tolerant co uh, consensus. Uh, what we do in our model is that is we characterize all equilibria. And what we find is that not every design that would be a, a design achieving consensus under um, traditional database, uh, distributed database, uh, not every such design is going to achieve consensus in the presence of rational agents that are individually profit maximizing, pay of maximizing when deciding to follow protocol. And um, different designs of the protocol differ in how costly they are. This is something that is not considered by traditional uh, distributed databases. I mean, there is always a cost of the system, but there is no need for cost of incentives. Whereas here, because we need to incentivize the nodes to follow the protocol, we need to pay them for achieving consensus in a way and punish them for not achieving consensus. And that brings cost to the system. So, uh, so we show how the design of a, of a protocol affects the uh, system costs of incentives needed for consensus, for achieving consensus in equilibrium. And kind of one example of what we are um, showing in the paper or what our results lead to is that in traditional Byzantine fault tolerant protocols, it is recommended that nodes should send and forward messages as much as they can, in a sense, you know, with probability one. And uh, if they cannot with probability one, if there is some loss of messages, then you should, uh, you should, you should send it as quickly as, as much as you can. If you can only send it with probability 0 0.9, send it with 0 0.9. We don't want to lose messages or restrict messages on purpose. 
But we show that if there is message loss and the messages cannot be sent perfectly, it may be prohib prohibitively costly to achieve reliable consensus if the messages are sent with probability 0 0.99. So this is kind of paradoxical. It, may, it, it turns out that lowering the probability with which the messages are sent, for example, to one half, may achieve consensus at the lower system costs. Right? So uh, you know, how are we showing uh, such results? Uh, we start uh, with the traditional Byzantine fault tolerant protocol that go back to the 80s, where distributed uh, compute, computer nodes communicate with each other in order to reach consensus, but they only get this uh, decide whether to update their local databases or their local ledger uh, based on the local information. They don't really know what other nodes are seeing, but they need to make sure that they are all going to update it in the same way, because this is what consensus is. Uh, we, uh, they need to do it in the presence of Byzantine nodes that may uh, behave arbitrarily. They may be sending, um, sending messages or not sending messages. They may or may not deviate from the protocol. Um, and the traditional, uh, a traditional uh, uh, distributed database, uh, traditional Byzantine fault tolerant protocol used for distributed databases stipulates that uh, non-Byzantine nodes uh, are going to follow the strategies prescribed by the protocol in an honest way. Uh, so this is a kind of a system that is used widely in tech companies. Uh, we wouldn't have Amazon, we wouldn't have Facebook, we wouldn't have Google without uh, very extensive use of distributed databases and, uh, and consensus protocols. Um, in this paper, we acknowledge that in blockchain, we can no longer assume that uh, the nodes, honest nodes who have not been hijacked, uh, will just simply follow the strategy. Uh, instead, we assume that non-Byzantine nodes are rational, they individually maximize their payoff. Um, and they also, you know, of course, need to worry about what the Byzantine nodes are doing. And uh, now they need to form beliefs about what the Byzantine uh, uh, nodes are doing. So we are going to keep um, uh, in line with the traditional computer science um, approach. And we're going to assume that, um, or the rational nodes are going to be assuming that Byzantine strategies are the worst possible, the worst case scenario. So uh, we formulated using ambiguity aversion about Byzantine strategies. 